Do you remember the strike, the 1913 strike? And barely. I barely remember. What I do remember was getting a good balling off. <laughs> the father never used his fist to us, but he gave me a few. Because well, I went downtown and I was just only looking at a, at a baton charge or something, but I wasn't in it. But I'd strict, I'd received strict instructions not to go downtown. But one thing I did see on that particular was I don't know whether it was that day or not, and it wasn't downtown. Now Croydon Park was in Fairview, and that's where all the where Jim Larkin had his headquarters. He lived there, you see. And where now was it exactly where Croydon Park was? It's all built on now. First, uh, I'd like to think of the name of the avenue you turned up, you know, to go into the big gates on the huge big field. And there they used to hold their meetings. Again, we wouldn't be allowed to go near any of those things. But they were coming back, and I had been down uh, down for a message, I think, down the North Strand. And suddenly, all the shops were up their shutters, you see. And I looked up, and there was no one on the road. I looked along. Just now, do you know the five lamps there? Well, I've been, I think, to Gallagher's. They were on the left. But the whole place was closed up. And I noticed not a person on the streets, except uh, not an ordinary policeman, but he'd be a superintendent, you know. And he was on his own. And it's, suddenly I saw, I heard rumbling. And a car came galloping over the bridge. And it was a cold ray, and it was empty. And there was a fellow, at that time they used to have the car, there was the dray, you see, and the things that came up like that, and the name of the firm was there on that, you see, and he had a grip on that, and a gun in his hand, and he pointed it back at the crowd that were coming after him. Well, the place was black from side to side. He Just over the bridge. Men! Men, they were returning from uh, well, from a meeting in Croydon Park, and this fellow, they were strikers. And this fellow apparently was a scab, a black leg. The fellow in the car? The fellow that was driving the car, you see. Because the, the coal trades, they were all out on strike. And they had brought some fellows over from England, even for, uh, to, uh, to, to, to black leg, as, as we'd say. Mm-hmm. But the horse was galloping as far, quick as he could get her to go. But the thing that struck me most, he didn't fire, but he kept pointing the gun. The... the uh, DMP, the, yes, the DMP superintendent just walked out across the road. He put up a hand like that. And they'd stopped, dropped off to a walk. And there must have been thousands of men that were so black. I know I was very young at the time, but I never forgot it. I thought that was a terrible thing. I didn't want to see the fellow smile. I, didn't, I wasn't worrying about him, but what did worry me was that those men were... had, had so, I, I don't know what was wrong with them. I mean, they were, their very weight would have, uh, would have brushed them aside, and yet they were, were dropped down to a walk and let him get away. I suppose in their heart they weren't sorry to see him get away. That might, have been it, yeah. Pardon? that might have been part of it. I well, I'd say it had a lot to do with it. But, uh, I know that uh, some of them were killed. But I remember reading or hearing about one fellow and he had a gold watch and chain. There wasn't a thing taken off him, but he was killed. Yes, a black leg. A black leg, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, I suppose you could expect that.